Hello everyone, uh, I'm glad to be here with you today. Uh, I will introduce quickly myself. So yes, I'm Amélie Gursa, that's me. <laughs> I'm a, a grooming artist at Fox VFX. Uh, I worked uh, at Fox VFX uh, since uh, three years now, and uh, I'm starting with Dini six years ago. Um, I started with Dini for general uh, work, uh, lighting, shading, texturing, and all the stuff. And then I started using it for grooming. Uh, so I will just uh, introduce quickly uh, Folks for you. So Folks is a studio uh, that is um, a worldwide studio. Uh, we are we have uh, Montreal Studio, Toronto, Bogota, Mumbai, and Saguenay. And um, Folks uh, was born in 2012, and uh, it's part of Pitch Black Company. So yeah, that's it for the quick presentation. Um, now I will introduce the feather in Udini. So um, when clients come to us uh, and ask us to do a uh, bird, uh, it was very challenging for us because we didn't do it uh, before. So um, uh, I will start uh, just do a, a little summa summary about what I will talk to you. So I will start by uh, explaining you how to prepare um, the work before Houdini. Uh, after, I will show you how to generate feather in birds. And after, I will quickly show you how we manage to integrate uh, birds into uh, shots. Uh, so uh, first of all, the very first step before going into Houdini it's uh, to analyze uh, reference and bring as much reference as you can. So it is uh, how it looks like. So uh, you bring uh, as much photo as you can, as much video, as much uh, all you can, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, all that can help you uh, understand uh, how a bird is made uh, that can help. And after that, you need to analyze uh, each part. So um, uh, it's very important because during the process in Udini, you will need to be able to generate each feather type. Uh, so the secondary, the primary, and uh, all the feather types that uh, we can see in a bird. And uh, also, as you can see, uh, you need to check the different zones uh, where the feather are generated. So this is the first step, and it is a very important step because um, a lot of artists just bring reference and start doing groom or feather. And if you don't uh, keep this step of analyze, you will uh, lost a lot of time after Inudini. So yeah, it's a cool part. It's the part where we dive into Udini. So first of all, I will talk about the tool we used. After, I will talk about how we generate the feather uh, on the body. And after, I will talk how we creating the bird in, in general. So um, where, when uh, the client asks us to do a feather, um, we, we decided to make it in Udini because a lot of our uh, pipeline is in Udini uh, for texture, for shading, and for um, lighting. So, uh, first of all, we ask SideFX if there is a tool available or if we have to make a tool on our own. And there is a tool. <laughs> so, the tool came with uh, all these different uh, digital assets. So, the first one, the feather generator, is the one that allows you to generate uh, the feather type. Uh, the second one, the feather weight, uh, allows you to uh, play with the density of your mask. Um, the third one, the feather groom, uh, allow you to um, populate the feather on the skin of your bird. I will explain all this, uh, this dig digital asset after. Uh, the feather unpack, uh, I will explain you after you will uh, understand better. Um, the feather detangle, it's a step at the end of the process that allow you just to detangle of the feather. And the feather deform is the one that allows you to uh, deform the high-raised feather depending of the proxy feather. 
and the feather V is just a visual a viewer for the viewport. Um. Okay, so this is the feather generator. So as you can see, there is a lot of parameter in this digital asset uh, that allow you to uh, create the feather shape you need to do. So as I said, it's important to add good reference and match one by one to be sure you achieve a realistic uh, feather. Um, so you, you can play with the clump, with the shape, with the lens. Uh, and as you can see, oops, sorry. <laughs> As you can see, at the top of, um, of the node, there is uh, FED24. This is uh, the important attribute uh, that you, can, you need to keep on your feather because all the tools work with this uh, attribute. So for example, in this case, the feather is called FED24. Um, it is a type of feather, for example, the secondary uh, feather. And after, when we, you will uh, paint your mask on the skin, you will paint a mask named F group 24, and this mask will generate this type of, of feather. That's why it's very important to set up uh, this parameter at the beginning. Yeah, so after that, it's the part where we starting uh, creating the bird. So we're starting by painting different masks, depending of each type of feather you analyzed in the reference. Um, so you create as much mask as you need, and it is a very good point with Houdini. It's that it's all procedural, so you can do all the pack and forth you need. Uh, you can create new masks, you can add some feather, you can change all the things you need. And after that, it is the part where we create the guide. Uh, because yes, for Feather, we, for this tool, we use guide. So um, this is the setup we use at Udini uh, to create guide in general. But uh, we just uh, change it a bit to, uh, to do it work for Feather. And yeah, as you see, the important thing is the F group node, as you can see. Uh, you need to just uh, be, um, your mask uh, is called F group uh, zero, for example, and your guide will uh, have this attribute too. Okay. So yes, you generate the guide. Uh, this one are the, the feather for the wings, but uh, it is the same thing for the body. We just generate the guide. You don't need to um, worry a lot about uh, the brush of the, the brushing of the guide because after, uh, at the end, there is a detangle pass that allow you just to to sculpt the 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 feather uh, the way you want to achieve the look. Okay, so it is the part where we you. Let me just make pause. Yeah, this is the part where we generate the feather depending of the guide and of the mask we creating before. So it looked like this. And uh, this is the feather uh, visualization that I showed you before. You can see that there is three type of feathers that are generated, the render one, the preview, and the proxy one. Um, so this, this uh, digital asset is just to allow you to see it in the viewport. So we switch between the different type of each feather. And of course, it's uh, procedural, so you can just uh, brush uh, the wings brush the feather and be able to, to match the reference you had. And after, uh, where when you are happy with that, uh, we just use the feather unpack node. Uh, this node will just split the three kind of feather. So we have the render, the proxy, and the mid -res. And this unpack node just split the different parts. So on the left, you have the high res feather. On, and in this part, so I just keep the proxy because I, I don't want the other one. Uh, 
And yes, so as I said, this is the high res feature, and this is the proxy. So after on the proxy, I just create group using the FED attribute I just uh, explained you before, just to be able to to split things in the, if I think if I need to. And after I use the feather detangle to avoid uh, collision and interpenetration between feather. Uh, after that, all this part is just because uh, we are exporting this proxy feather for rigging, so they we are able to it's just naming convention. And uh, yeah, that's it. So this is uh, our feather. Uh, this is on the red part uh, the feathers are that we exported for rigging, so they can rig this proxy. And after that, I just need to show you the last digital asset. That is this one, the feather deform. And this one uh, just allow you to deform the high res feather depending of the proxy one. So you will see if you animate your feather, you will see it will be a very good animation. Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay, so th that's, uh, that's why we use the feather deform. It's allow you to deform the high res feather. Uh, so uh, after it's the same thing for the body. So we generate our, the all the feather, we create our group for in the proxy, and we detangle uh, each part. That's why I create group. It's because uh, uh, I want to be able to manage each part of the feather, and I use a blend shape to to achieve the final look. And of course, you can also use a vellum brush. Uh, I don't use it, use it in this case, but for another bird, I use it uh, to be able to just brush uh, one feather if you want to add damage on the feather or stuff like this. Uh, yeah. After that, uh, we when we achieve uh, the look of our bird, the question of how do we integrate it in shot come to us because um, uh, we didn't want to do CFX for each bird because uh, in some shots we have like 10 or 20 birds so we can't uh, do CFX for each uh, of them. So we decided to find a way. Um, usually um, our digital, digital asset that we sending to the lighting um, is made with a deform setup for the groom. So when we don't want to do CFX, uh, there is an automatic setup that just deforms the groom. And uh, so we decided to make the same thing for Feather. So that's how uh, look our digital asset. And, uh, and you can see that there is uh, the anim uh, alambic that should come in this place. Uh, so this is a typos. And when we bring the animation, nothing happened. <laughs> We need to go in the deform type, and the feather will follow the skin. And we are missing the big uh, feather because they are also exported from animation. So we just put the alambic, and everything is procedural, and everything is automatic. So later, just had to bring the, uh, the two different alambic, and uh, after that, uh, render. So it looked like this. We just use uh, the classic uh, node in Udini, nothing uh, crazy, just a point deform and uh, and uh, the digital asset uh, deform from the tool, uh, the feather tool. So that's the result. Uh, the, the eagle was made for um, a show called Joe Pickett, and uh, it was uh, an injured eagle. So that's how it looks. And this is the ribbon for Umbrella Academy. And I will show you a little reel about all the birds we did using this tool. I think there is no song.
So, thank you. <laughs> So this is uh, how we you, we achieve achieve to do the birds at folks. So if there is some point to to just uh, know is that there is a tool from SideFX that uh, allow you to do feather, and it is very friendly and very very use, easy to use. Um, of course, we adapt it uh, with uh, our workflow because we wanted to export um, Feather uh, with UV to be able to do the texturing outside of Houdini. But uh, you can use it like it because there is already uh, a part where you are able to, to create the shader inside the Feather generator. Uh, and the, the very important thing also when we you created the creator in general is to to make uh, to to keep very good reference and to analyze it be, uh, before starting uh, using it in Udini because it saved you a lot of time and uh, that's it and maybe uh, you you should give it a try if you're interested of uh, doing feather of course and um, we however we we faced a little problem using this tool is uh, when uh, the, the wings of the birds uh, closed, uh, we have some internal penetration, as, and as we decided to not do CFX, uh, the deformation setup just breaks the feather, so we managed to do blend shape instead, uh, automatic blend shape. So that's it, we just create two, two birds, one with the wings open, one with the wings closed, and after the brain shape uh, was automatic at the round at the round of time, and uh, uh, yes, as uh, as you know, there is a new tool coming in UDD twenty. So uh, as uh, we are waiting for it uh, a lot, <laughs> and uh, so for now we, we are using this one, but uh, let's uh, let's see uh, in UDD twenty. So thank you. So, do you have question? <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Uh, really nice presentation, and it was really interesting to see. Um, beautiful birds. I have a question, since you said the first thing that you need to do is to great research. But when you research the different sorts of birds, how are they different? And uh, also, what do you love about the process the most yourself? Uh, thank you for the question. <laughs> uh, so the, um, the, the bird are, in fact, when we, we check the different bird, we find out that the thing uh, in common is the biggest wing, uh, the biggest feather in the, on the wings. This one don't uh, change a lot because there are secondary, primary, and cover one, and stuff like this, but, um, uh, yes, uh, what was the question? <laughs> sorry. So basically, they are not that different. No, ah, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes, no, not that different, but of course, uh, the shape of the feather change uh, for the raven. Uh, the feather were, were little than for the eagle, and also the, um, the shape change. Uh, the eagle had... Uh, very uh, circular uh, feather and the ribbon too, but uh, some of them on the top of the of the back uh, are very uh, angular. So yeah, th there is a lot of difference between uh, the uh, there is little difference. Sorry, a lot. Of <laughs> uh, there is little difference between uh, the different birds. But uh, yes, and what I love uh, when I did the, that is that uh, it's very creative. Thanks to Udini, we don't have to worry a lot about the technical aspects of uh, all the stuff. And so it's just creativity. We, we create the feather, we match the reference, and uh, that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Great talk, thanks. Um, I have a question regarding simulation. Uh, how I understood it is that uh, once the feathers are in place, 
you kind of point deform them and shape them to the animation, right? Uh, did you also have any kind of simulation setups for like wind or? Yes, yes, we um, we had uh, procedural um, uh, procedural setup to add wind in the biggest feather, not in the little, but in the biggest feather. It was not it was not done by, by Velum. It was just very procedural with noise and stuff like this. But in some shots, uh, we needed to simulate uh, the feather. So in this case, we just use Velum. And uh, as I showed you, uh, you, we simulate the proxy using Vellum, and after we just deform the high res with the simulation uh, proxy. Cool. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Hello, great presentation. Um, just a tiny question, uh, because I've never done Feather. Uh, at the end, the high resolution is just a lot of curves. Okay, okay. Yes, that's okay, it. Yeah, <laughs> Anything else? Going once, going twice. Okay, thank you very much, Emily. Thank you.